Welcome to Home Renovation, the YouTube channel dedicated to helping homeowners renovate and get professional results. Today we are talking about floor transitions. So we're going to be talking about how to go from one surface to another and if you do it right or if you've made an absolute disaster of your project and you need some salvation or if you're finishing off into an unfinished space and all the different steps you need to take to get these things done like a pro. So you may have seen our videos before on all of our flooring installation techniques and one thing that we never covered was the transitions and there's a reason we never did it is because we were waiting for the opportunity to cover all the information that we need to give you to do it properly. Now right down here we're going to take a look at what a finished floor transition should look like. You will notice that it is exactly underneath where this door is going to close to. All right, And the secret to that is installing your flooring just a little bit to the inside of the jam and right under just a little inside the door stop. You really want to leave a three quarter inch gap at the maximum all the way across. What you'll find is that these transition strips are about an inch and a quarter wide. Okay, so if you leave a three quarter inch gap, it gives you the flexibility to establish exactly where you want it and have lots of overlap on each side of the floor. Okay, makes sense? Once you have that set up and you've got this piece cut, the rest of the process is pretty straightforward if you've installed your floor properly. Now the reason we have the direction of our floor in two different directions here is because we did a huge room down a hallway and then we did a bedroom knowing there's no way we're going to line these up. And we didn't want to have these boards getting cut wide to thin in two different locations. So by changing the direction of a floating floor over here, we avoid that conflict. So when this is installed, it looks pretty darn fantastic. If these grooves were going this way from big to small and this one's getting changed as well, it would really be a bit of a conflict with the eye and it would kind of mess you up to look at it. Now, the first thing you do before you get rolling on the installation of these transitions is you got to clean them out. <laughs> a vacuum would work as well. <laughs> but here's the secret behind the science. This is a medium density fiber fashioned T-molding. T-molding is kind of self-explanatory. It's designed to cover the gap from two different surfaces that are at the same height. You can only do so many square feet before you need a transition for the expansion contraction of the floor. The rule of thumb is usually between two to 600 square feet maximum if your room is big. And the more rooms you have, the more times you need transition. So people ask me quite often, when do I need a transition? I generally tell them every time you have a door, just put it in. It makes your life simple and it's a lot easier to install. Now these systems come with this plastic piece here. If you take it out of the package, don't throw it away. It's vitally important. I've seen a lot of guys cut the underlay out, put in some construction adhesive, press this in, put paint cans on top, try to tape them down. All of that is just futile. Put this in here, take a red marker and mark where the holes are that are in this track. And that information should be translated to the under pad underneath. Make it really obvious. And what you do, what you do is you go out and you buy yourself some little plastic plugs because right now we're on top of concrete. If we were on top of wood, I would just take my wood screw right away and screw it down. But because we're on concrete, we're gonna actually pre-drill into the concrete put in a plug so that we get a nice grab here. And the secret behind that is just to make sure that you buy your bit that's wide enough that you can set this concrete anchor all the way into the concrete, okay? So, this is gonna be a little loud, but we're gonna drill the three holes. That works good, okay. So what we're gonna do is just put our little plastic plugs in here. Now you don't wanna use your hammer to set that, but if you put your handy dandy Olfa knife on it, it 
figures, eh? Okay. Now, if you can't get your little plug all the way in, don't be too worried about it. We are creating such an amount of compression here, it's ridiculous. It's quite the overkill job. Now, just get each of these screws started in the hole before you bury them all down. So you don't accidentally lock it out of position before you get your other holes lined up. Nice and snug. Okay, so I want you to be careful that you don't over tighten the screw. Watch what happens to the, the, the gap between these two fins on the plastic. When that's tight, oops, sorry, my bad. That's over tight and it starts to pinch. If it starts to pinch, back the screw up a bit and let that fin open up. Or you'll have a delible of time trying to stick that in. And all we do is line up the bottom of that T and slide that into place. And then slowly snap it down. Now, you'll notice that when I put this piece completely inserted, it's still rocking around, okay? And here comes the problem with this industry. When you go to the store and you buy laminate flooring and you buy an underpad, most of the time these transitions are sold separately and they're not made by the same manufacturer and they're not made with any specific thickness in mind of flooring. So if your flooring isn't thick enough for the T-molding, what you need to do is get your knife in here and remove the underpad because you need more depth. It's not always the case. But you'll find, for instance, if you go to your local building store, they're not going to have T-molding and nosing molding for every type of floor color that they have. Those will be available for special order from the manufacturer. And most people take for granted the fact that if they bought the floor at the store, they'll be able to get the trim at the store. And quite often, they're not available. Now what we have to do is basically start this installation all over again. So I'm going to turn this around. Install this in two new places. <laughs> All right. I'll try this again for the first time. All right. Here we go. Now we have no more movement. It's completely still floating. The floors can contract and expand underneath this thing. Beautiful. Ah. And you'll see that when we close the door, it actually has a really nice look. All right, now you'll see that in this particular job, actually the homeowner is installing the flooring here. And <laughs> he did that because A, he wanted to try to do something himself to help along. And he saw the videos, he figured out how hard could it be. Now I gave him clear instruction as to where to stop in the door and he did it the last time. But this particular time he, guess he was getting tired. And he did what a lot of homeowners do. Um, they did what they thought looked right and he stopped right in the middle of the door stop. And they'd bring the other flooring up and stop short, right? Just like we did in the last door. And they would install this. And in theory, that looks like it looks fine until you close the door. And you can instantly tell that just looks ridiculous. If you're standing in a hallway and you've got more than one of these transitions and they're all in different locations under the door, it really screams, ah, do it yourself. -er. So the way we make this professional is we actually have to cut this floor back to where it should be. Okay, so take your time when you're installing your flooring. Be patient, follow the rules, always finish your flooring 
about a quarter inch to half an inch inside the door so you have room to get your transition where you want it so you can look like a pro. Because now I've got to pull out the big boy tools. This is my fine oscillating tool. And I just put down some tape to represent where the cut line should be. And I've got to come along and cut all these floorboards off because this floor was started here and then did the whole room. I figured it'd be a lot more fun to show on camera. The process of cutting something off is a repair than just having this poor guy do the whole room all over again. So. Alrighty. Well, we're almost halfway through one of the boards, but you get an idea of how much trouble you're going to cause yourself if you don't do it right the first time. This is going to take about a half an hour, and I'm probably going to go through three of these blades. So remind yourself, when you get to the door, stop, check the instructions again, get your line set properly, and do it right the first time, please. Now, after that's cut, the installation is exactly like the other one, so there's nothing new to learn here. So we're going to go to the third choice now, which is to go right from laminate onto concrete. And I'll make sure you get this one right because a lot of people make a serious mistake on this transition. So the third installation we're going to show you today is to go from regular laminate floor right down to the concrete. So this is where your flooring stops into an unfinished space. And the product we want to use for that is what we call a reducer. One it, second. Uh, all right, roll. it goes from one height down to another. Okay. And the way that that installs is relatively simple. And this one actually fits really, really well on top of the underpad. And there's a reason for that. It's made of medium density fiber. And you don't want that coming in contact with the concrete. So, if you're one of these homeowners that's made the mistake, installed your flooring, and then came along with the knife because it was unsightly, and you trimmed back all the extra underpad and vapor barrier, now you've got a situation where this nosing, the medium density fiber, is in touch with concrete. It's gonna pull moisture, it's gonna swell, and it's going to end up molding. So the only thing that you can do is take your handy dandy kills. This is a product that I have in my toolbox. All right. And spray seal the bottom of your molding. If you spray seal that, then you will create a moisture barrier between that and your concrete. And that's how you can save the day. Or you can try to install a little bit of plastic there. But honestly, this I think is a lot more effective. Now the secret to how this reducer works is actually in this plastic track. It is shorter than the ones used on the, the tra T transition. Because it's designed to go to the same height to the same height, it's a much taller transition, which is why we had to cut the underpad out. In this case, it's made shorter so it sits on top of the underpad. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to set this up right where you want it, like that, perfect. And again, follow the same steps. Take your marker out. Mark your spot where you want to drill your holes, and then we'll go from there. There, there we go. Okay. Now, we're going to get rid of the extra dust on top, and Pull this back and clean out all the extra dirt from underneath. If you leave a mountain of stone dust underneath your vapor barrier, you're not going to have a good result. Okay, so now we take our plugs and we got three of them. These are a lot easier to install because we don't have flooring on both sides anymore. Okay. Beautiful. I'm going to set the drag, drilling a hole with that masonry bit and throwing in a tapcon screw. I know it takes a minute, but if you're installing vinyl flooring in a basement, that is the process for setting your vinyl floor solidly in place. Oh, that was a little tight. I noticed the fins collapse. Okay. There we go. 
Now, we're going to set that piece right into the track. And now that you have the transition installed, go ahead and cut off all the extra stuff so it looks pretty. Voila. All right, so now we've shown you all the different techniques you're gonna to need to be somewhat successful installing these trims. Remember, it can drive you nuts, and if all else fails, yes, you can use construction adhesive and a couple of pails of paint and some tape. <laughs> but if you don't need to, that's a lot simpler, and it's going to perform really, really well long-term for you. The other system, in a lot of cases, glues all the floor together, and then you'll lose the ability for expansion and contraction, okay? Now I'm going to go back to driving myself nuts cutting this floor out so I can finish this job off. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, and we'll see you again next time. Click the video to see how this project turned out.